This is the annotation and analysis of the divine image. Um, this is from Songs of Innocence. Um, while it doesn't have a poem of the same name, it is considered to be paired to the poem The Human Abstract from Songs of Experience. So we'll start with the title. Divine means it's an adjective. It means godlike. An image <clears throat> is a common noun that means uh, replica or picture. So the title suggests that something that is in the image of God. So when we read the poem, we're going to find out what the, so the um, definite article, what is the one true image of God? Okay, so it's, it's going to be a religious argument. That outlines, well, Blake's key doctrine, I think. Um, uh, so we'll have a look at the structure. I'll do a summary and you'll get an idea of what. Um, so it's, it's not just any old religious argument. It's Blake's religious argument, how he feels God is represented on earth. So we have five quatrains, five four-line stanzas. Again, really simple structure. Um, and it's supposed, it, it looks like it should be an alternate rhyme scheme, but the rhyming is really, really, really poor. So we've got distress, ness, dear, care. Mm face, dress, ooh. and then in this stanza, stanza, in stanza four, it's climb and divine that rhyme, not distress and peace at all, and then um, due and two. So um, the rhyme scheme is all over the place, but I think it's used more to emphasise the key words that rhyme together and also to highlight the key parts of Blake's argument. This, is, this poem comes across as a, a real argument for a specific way of thinking. Um, <clears throat> all right, so um, I will read and summarize very quickly. Okay, so stanza one to mercy, pity, peace, and love all pray in their distress, and to these virtues of delight return their thankfulness. So everyone needs these four virtues, and when they're upset, that's what they turn to. Four mercy, pity, peace, and love is God, our Father dear, and mercy, pity, and peace, and love is man, his child, and care. So essentially, uh, mercy, pity, peace, and love are God, and they're also man, which means that man is a reflection of God. Um, for mercy has a human heart and pity a human face, and love the human form divine, and peace the human dress. So what he's trying to do here is prove to you how pity, uh, love, peace, pity, and um, mercy appear in humanity as part of what humans look like and how therefore humans represent God. Uh, he then starts to build up his argument more. Um, then every man of every clime that prays in his distress prays to the human form divine, love, mercy, pity, peace. So he changes um, the listing here around so that distress and peace finally rhyme, but actually clime and divine tend to be the ones that rhyme better. Um, but what he's saying in this one is, well, if you're praying to God, actually who you're praying to is you're praying to people, other people to help you. Um, and it doesn't matter where you're from, everybody does the same thing. So whatever, you th whatever your belief system is, if you believe in one God, God is represented in humanity. Uh, he sums it up in the final stanza, his culminative argument. Uh, he's very forceful here um, with imperatives. All must love the human form in heathen Turk or Jew, where mercy, love and pity dwell. Their God is dwelling too. So um, God equals the best parts of all men. So whether you're a, a heathen or you're a Muslim or you're Jewish, um, mercy, pity, peace and love all dwell within you. And therefore God dwells within all of us. Uh, and therefore, if you worship God, you're worship, worshipping other people. You're waiting for other people to show you. Um, the best part of themselves and therefore you have to believe in other people in order to believe in God so it's quite a deep spiritual poem um, the stanzas are quite short a lot of the stuff is fairly straightforward so we'll go through the stanzas now and pick out some of the things that you can use to talk about <clears throat> so <clears throat> all the way through the poem mercy pity peace and love are all identified with non-standard caps. 
okay and this identifies them as being people or important but in this case people so two is your preposition that suggests they are people that are being prayed to or um, worshipped um, so it suggests that's a formal name and therefore a human form um, all is our pronoun here okay um, all pray in their distress that means everyone um, uh, everyone fundamentally uh, when they pray tend to want the same thing from God especially if they're praying because something isn't going well um, as in in their distress um, distress is your abstract noun that can cover all types of problems so it's a good one to talk about um, pray is a um, present tense verb which makes it infinite which means this is what is always going on so always people are praying the most when they're upset about something and they want help and usually they're praying for intervention from one of these four virtues but actually the intervention will come from another person not necessarily directly from god um, and he calls them virtues of delight okay um, and basically by giving them names and giving them capitals he's anthropomorphizing them anthropo morphizing means he's giving human characteristics to a virtue And he swaps this around some of the stanzas he gives the virtues human characters and some of the stanzas he gives um, humans the virtuous character so it, it depends on how he's trying to show that they're linked together um but all of them are linked very much with being human um and to these virtues of delight return their thankfulness so when their prayers are answered obviously in the form of another man i'm um, helping them out um that's who they thank um mercy pity peace and love the the answer from morphize versions of um the the best bits of god um you notice that they're quite they're not usually masculine traits like courage or righteousness they're they're quite moderate traits that make you a better person overall rather than a forceful one okay um stanza two you can tell he's going to build an argument here because he's starting with um, coordinating conjunction. He does this in this. These three stanzas all start with the coordinating conjunction. Suggest he's going to build on the argument that he's creating in each stanza. Okay, so he's um. This is where he builds his argument for his idea. Okay, four. Um. Now, this is great. He uses two direct metaphors for mercy, pity, and peace, and love is God, and mercy, pity, peace, and love is man. Both of these are direct and clear metaphors. So, um, God is mercy, pity, peace, and love, and so is man. Okay? Because man, so our father, dear, is just a, a noun phrase for God. Um, man is his child in care and obviously the child of God is Jesus who obviously took human form um, for be to better support humans and help them but then once human once Jesus is resolved of their sins he goes away and man is expected to carry on that work in God's name and Jesus's name because they're all part of the same thing so <clears throat> you've got some great fricative alliteration here Okay, the k, k noise um, shows us our <clears throat> his um, compassion um, and also gives us that hard sound uh, to show the strength of his argument. Okay, so 
Um, both of these really straightforward electric clear metaphors are very declarative in their tone. Okay, declarative means a statement of fact. So he's making this argument as factual sounding as possible. Okay, which gives it a very straightforward, this is my argument, look how clear it is, this kind of well-structured um, presentation of his ideas. Okay, so the second point he's going to make, starting with this one. So for, think of it as a word for because. Um, for mercy has a human heart, pity a human face, and love the human form divine, and peace the human dress. Now look at this repetition, human, 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 human. So this repetition. Okay, the repetition here of human, okay, um, is linked, links us again to the idea that God is in all man. Okay, and therefore so are his virtues, pity, peace, um, uh, mercy and love. Um, and again, he's anthropomorphizing the virtues by saying that mercy has a human heart, pity's got a human face, love the human form and uh, peace the human dress. So, so all of these work to anthropomorphize each of these virtues as being a human virtue, making it part of humanity. Okay. Um, and I like the idea that love is the human form, so that your body is the thing that would be engaged in physical love, therefore that's how it links together. Peace, the human dress, and what you wear shows your intentions. Uh, mercy something you would, is a feeling you feel in your heart and pity is how you look at others so the idea of face heart form and dress linking to those is very clever as well okay um we've got the coordinate conjunction again to, so he's booting his argument further so if you believe all of that's true then i've oh, got the repetition of the intensifier every then every man of every climb climb is an archaism for climate so he's basically saying everyone from everywhere. Um, so this means all people, regardless of where they're from. Then every man of every crime, the crime that preys in his distress, and this is obviously repeated from stanza um, one. So if you if everybody who prays, regardless of where they're from and who they pray to, when they pray in their distress, they're praying for other people to help them out and here we've got um, our um, ascendant list here of the virtues um, but they're in a different order than they have been all the way through um, to try and get distress and peace to rhyme but actually it's the place and divine that rhyme so <laughs> poor Blake um, it's the it's the the emphasis on the fact that it doesn't matter where you're from, um, you're all praying to the same basic principle. So it's actually the climate divine rhyme that's important here. Okay, the fact that praise is an infinite verb shows that it's an ongoing process. At some point, everyone will, um, and he rep repeats. So this is repeated. From the um, all the way through, but from the previous stanza, for, from stanza three. Um, so they're not praying to God, actually, they're praying to others. They're praying to see those qualities in other people. And it's also links to the title because it talks about the divine image. <clears throat> Um, obviously, also, if you have a look at the reshuffling of this list, it puts peace at the end um, to emphasise it as a key. Um, to all the human virtues. 
All right. Love being first, peace being last. Um, right, final stanza. So here, because we start with an and, this is going to sum up the argument that he's presented so far. Um, and it starts with a fabulous imperative. All must love. So if you follow the argument so far, then you must understand now. Um, this is a lovely must love. Imperative tone here is created by the use of an active modal verb. All must love the human form. Um, in heathen, Turk or Jew, a heathen is as someone who has different beliefs to you. So if uh, I was Catholic and you were Jewish, you would be a heathen to me. But if I was Jewish and you were Catholic, you'd be a heathen to me. So someone who has a different view from you. And he gives the idea here. So Turk would be um, Muslim and Jew obviously replies to the Jewish faith. So it doesn't matter how you worship God. So it doesn't matter what the policies of your church are. So um, regardless of your church, um, where Percy, mercy, love and pity dwell, their God is dwelling too. Um, look at this preposition again. Um, doesn't matter what's happening, wherever these are found. So again, essentially... Um, dwell means live so if mercy pity peace and love are all com uh, virtues that exist in humans it means wherever people dwell then wherever people are living then god is living too um so dwell is an archaism for live but essentially this is saying that wherever people are the virtues of god are and therefore, that's what those three little dots mean, therefore, God is there as well. So the sense that um, humans are a replication of God on earth. And again, also, I'll put the imperative, this is here again, gives us this great declarative tone of um, factual belief. OK, um, and he, he this is a Blake feels like he's presented a solid argument with his factual and declarative tone to show he's clear in his beliefs all the way through. OK, thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.